Japan is arguably one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It has a vast array of volcanic mountains, bamboo forests, and tropical beaches. Japan is split up into four main islands, Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyushu. Each of these islands has its own unique ecosystem, and the climate can differ from island to island. Hokkaido is the only place in Japan that you can find brown bears, but the warmer islands of Japan are also home to other unique creatures, such as the Japanese saro and the Japanese macaque. Although Japan is a very modern country with a large population, there are still plenty of places for wildlife. Even inside the largest of cities, there are still little pockets of nature where wildlife can thrive. But just like many other major countries around the world, Japan also has problems with invasive and introduced species. I have touched on this topic previously in another video, but I thought that it was a good time to revisit it, as today I'll be going through five introduced and invasive species in Japan. And for our first species, we will be heading over to Australia, as we have the black swan. Now swans almost entirely come in one colour. The black neck swan slightly breaks this rule, but the black swan completely breaks it and totally stands out from the crowd. As well as its black coloration, it also has a very striking red bill, and this coloration makes it one of the most interesting swan species out there. As well as being a rather strange large bird, black swan also refers to an unpredictable or unforeseen event, and this is typically one with extreme consequences. This was why in September 2021, after a black swan arrived in Tiananmen Square, it was quickly captured and disappeared. Like all species of swan, the black swan is a water bird and can be found in both salt and fresh waterways. They are normally found in larger areas of water as they need around 40 meters of clear water to take off. In these wetland areas they primarily feed on algae and weeds and to get at this food they use their long neck and plunge their head underwater to feed on the food on the river or lake bed. Occasionally these birds will graze on land but they are rather clumsy walkers. Although these birds are native to Australia and New Zealand they can now be found in many other places around the world. They were introduced into Kyoto Tokyo and Osaka between 1950 and 1960, and the majority of these individuals were escaped captive specimens. As these birds are so striking, they were very popular to have in private collections, and it was only a matter of time before some escaped. There's thought to be around 100 to 10,000 black swans in Japan today, and these swans can have a negative effect on the ecosystem. These black swans compete with other water birds, some of which are endangered. Because swans are also a rather aggressive species, they can often push other birds out of certain habitats, and even take take over their nests. This problem won't be going anywhere anytime soon, as their numbers have grown significantly since they were first introduced, and now this bird's numbers may be too large to control. So even though this swan is very beautiful and striking, it can have a negative effect on the native birds. But for our next species, we'll be making the short trip over to East and Southeast Asia, as we have the masked palm civet. Now civets are a very interesting group of animals. They can often seem very cat-like, but are often a little stockier. The masked palm civet is mostly nocturnal, and spends most of the night looking for fruits, vegetable matter, and seeds. Although these items make up the majority of their diet, they will also take small mammals as well as birds and reptiles. Although the masked palm civet is larger than many other creatures in its area, it does still fall prey to some predators, such as tigers, hawks, and crocodiles. As well as looking out for predators, the masked palm civet also has to look out for human-related threats. These animals are victims of habitat destruction, and they also fall victim to poaching. These civets are widely eaten in southern China and Vietnam. Vietnam, and they are often poached to meet the demand. Because their habitats are also being destroyed, they often wander into farmland, which will usually have a bad outcome for the civet. But as well as being found in other parts of East and Southeast Asia, today this civet can also be found in Japan. As you can see from this footage from Harajuku Station, they are more than happy to mingle in the cities, and have adapted to life in Japan. These animals were deliberately introduced into Japan during World War II, and this was mainly for the use of their fur. The numbers soon got out of control, and they can now be found throughout most of the islands. As the masked palm civets have such a wide diet, they can have a huge negative impact on the ecosystem, both feeding on the native species and also competing with them. The native raccoon dogs are in the same ecological niche, and this often means that they directly compete with each other. They also have a massive negative impact on ground nesting birds, as they're more than happy to take their eggs. So even though they're treated very badly in other parts of the world, they're still not very welcome in Japan. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to North America, as we have the muskrat. Now the muskrat is a medium-sized semi-aquatic rodent and thrives in freshwater wetlands. They are very efficient swimmers and can swim underwater for up to 17 minutes. Despite their name, they are not members of the genus Rattus and are not closely related to beavers either. In 
Instead, they are part of the family that includes voles and lemmings, but live very different lives to both of these creatures. Muskrats are very social creatures and live in large territorial families. In their wetland homes, muskrats will eat almost anything. They show a preference towards vegetation, but will also eat snails, mussels, salamanders, crustaceans, and even fish. They're known to eat up to a third of their weight every day, and this means that muskrats are often very busy creatures. Muskrats are often confused with koi poos, which look very similar, but are much larger. If you watched my other video on invasive species in Japan, you'll know that koi poos are invasive in Japan and have negative effects on their wetland ecosystems. The muskrat has had a very similar impact, but not as disastrous as they are much smaller and are found in much smaller numbers. They were introduced into Japan for their fur before World War II and were released shortly after the war. The first record of naturalization in Japan was in 1947 and their population has grown ever since. They predate on native plants such as the many species of lotus and they are known to cause damages to riverbanks by building nests. They are once again bad news for the native wetland birds and because of this it is illegal to transport and keep this species in Japan. So even though these creatures are bad news for the Japanese ecosystem, at least they're not as bad as the koi poos. Before our next species will be staying in North America, but more precisely the southeastern United States as we have the green anole. Now this species is a tree dwelling anole lizard and is most commonly found at the edges of subtropical forests. These lizards are known for being very territorial and like with many other members of their family, they have a colourful flap on their throat which they use to assert dominance and display to other members of their species. If this display doesn't ward off any would-be rivals, they quickly turn to violence and these fights can turn very nasty. Adults usually reach a maximum body size of around 7.5 centimetres, making them a relatively small lizard, but this size makes them very nimble and means that they can take down very fast moving insects. In their natural habitat most of their threats come in the form of birds, but they're also targeted by other reptiles such as snakes and broad headed skinks. This reptile was first noticed in Japan during the 1960s and the 1980s. It's thought that these individuals could have been escaped pets, although it's thought that some could have hitchhiked on US military transport during and after World War II. These reptiles have had a massive negative impact on the ecosystem, both by competing with native lizards and also by hunting and causing the extinction of some native insects. This is especially the case on some of the smaller islands of Japan, where the ecosystem is very fragile and can easily be destroyed by such an efficient predator. Because of this, keeping this species is legally restricted and this lizard's numbers and movements are often monitored. So although they fit in very well in southeastern USA, they are a massive problem in the smaller islands of Japan. But for our final species, we'll be heading to sub-Saharan Africa, as we have the pin-tailed wider. Now this bird is a relatively small species of songbird, which is known for the very long tail feathers on the males. These birds are normally around 12 centimeters in length, but the breeding male's tail adds another 20 centimeters onto this length. In the wild, these birds favor grasslands and savannas, but they have proven to be very fond of urban areas and often venture into parks and people's gardens. Although they may not look very similar, the pin-tailed wider and the common cuckoo have a lot in common. These birds are both brood parasites, which means that they lay their eggs in other birds' nests and leave it to other birds to look after their young. The pin-tailed wider tends to target the nests of waxbills, and their young look looks very similar to the young of these waxbills. But because the males are so striking, they're often kept as cage birds, and it's thought this is how they got into Japan. They were first seen in Japan in the 1970s, but have only been found in very small numbers. It's possible that they could have a negative effect on the ecosystem, mostly through being a brood parasite and making other birds look after their young. They could also have a negative effect on agriculture, as they mostly feed on seeds and grains, and would happily feed in many farms across Japan. But so far, as they're found in such small numbers, they're not really seen is invasive, as they haven't been seen in Tokyo since the 1990s, and even though these birds are very beautiful, they don't belong in Japan. If you know of any other creatures that can make it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.